John Cran with JimFeist.com. We're going to take a look at the 2015 NFC South Division. Carolina's won back-to-back -back South Division titles, but they come off a losing record, 7-8-1, and one, capturing this worst division in the NFL. Even Las Vegas doesn't know who's going to win this division. you got the Saints at 6-5. The Panthers projected to repeat at 7-5. The Falcons at 5-2. For the record, Jameis Winston and the Bucks are at 10 to 1 to win the division. It's not a division known for defense either as the Saints and the Falcons gave up the most points in the NFL last year. We're going to start with the New Orleans Saints. They are projected by Las Vegas at nine wins on the season. Saints are rebuilding on the fly off a season going seven and nine straight up, six and 10 against the spread. Also 10 and six over the total with that bad defense. The offense though was sizzling and should be great again. They were number one in the NFL in yards last year, over 411 per game, ninth in points, just over 25 per game. 36-year-old quarterback Drew Brees is back. He had 33 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, over 4,900 yards passing. And in fact, he's topped over 4,900 yards in four consecutive seasons. Now, Brees does lose his top two targets in Jimmy Graham and wide receiver Kenny Stills. And he had 20 turnovers and 29 sacks last year. Still, wide receiver Marcus Colston is back, 902 yards, along with speedy young Brandon Cooks, 550 yards. They got 25-year-old tight end Josh Hill. He's six foot five and is going to be replacing Graham, although he only had 14 catches for 176 yards, five touchdowns. It was surprising the Saints didn't look for a wide receiver in the draft, so they're going to take a look at some un. Tested kids in Nick Toon, Brandon Coleman, and Shontavious Jones. Now, New Orleans was 13th in the NFL in rushing the football last year. Pretty good ground game, and they returned Mark Ingram, 964 yards, 4.3 yards per carry. Plus, they add 28-year-old C.J. Spiller out of the Buffalo Bills. He had 300 yards, and he's pretty good out of the backfield, too, as a receiver. Now, the offensive line looks much improved with Teron Armstead and team captain Zach Streif, joined by center Max Unger. He was with the Seattle Seahawks and rookie Andreas Pete. He was the 13th overall pick out of Stanford. Now the Saints 406 rushing attempts last year. That was the fourth most they've had in the Peyton Breeze era. So this should be a balanced, explosive and potent offense in the NFL for 2015. Now the Saints defense the last two years under Rob Bryan, boy, it's been all over the map. Last year, 28th in points allowed, 26.5 points per game, and they had trouble with sacks, too. Two years ago, they had 49 sacks as Rob Ryan brought the blitz, but only 34 last year. Wasn't a very good unit against the run last season. 29th, allowing over 132 yards rushing per game. So Seattle brings in five-time All-Pro defensive tackle Kevin Williams, now entering his 13th NFL season. You have to wonder, though, how much does he have left in the tank? Now, linebacker Cameron Jordan is very good. Last two years, 12 and a half and seven and a half sacks. They have rookie linebacker Stephen Anthony comes aboard from Clemson. He could start. The secondary needs a return to health of Jarius Bird and Kenny Vaccaro. He was actually pretty good two years ago when he was healthy. Plus, they bring in Brandon Browner from the champion Patriots, a big cornerback, as well as rookie cornerback P.J. Williams. So some new looks and a very good depth. Now, the schedule for the Saints for their first seven games are going to be on the road, and they're not easy at Arizona, Carolina, Philadelphia, and at Indianapolis. They do get the bye in week 11, and there's an easy schedule for them down, to down the stretch with their toughest games at home. In second place, we'll look at defending champion, the Carolina Panthers, with eight and a half projected wins over under by Las Vegas. Now, Carolina, last four years, their records, six and 10, seven and nine, 12 and 4 and 7, 8 and 1. So you're talking about a team that has losing records in three of the last four years despite back to back division titles here. Now, the offense has been primarily about rushing the football. They were seventh in rushing last year with 127.2 yards per game, 19th in passing. Ground attack will be fine with running back Jonathan Stewart, 809 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. He is back, although the offensive line is a concern with 29 year old tackle Mike. Or coming aboard. He was with Tennessee last year, a one year stint there, but he was released, failing the physical in May. And then they also have rookie Darrell Williams. He's going to step in at right tackle. So there are some question marks with this offensive line. They may have to pass more, but that'll be fine because they got 26 year old quarterback Cam Newton, 18 touchdowns and 12 picks, 38 sacks last year. 
He was also second on the team with rushing in each of the last two years with over 500 yards. But there's a, an improved passing game here. You got tight end Greg Olson, who's had over 1,000 yards in each of the last two years leading the team. But potentially this wide receiver core could be terrific. You got 6'5", Kelvin Benjamin with over 1,000 yards. And 6'4", rookie Devin Funches comes aboard. He was the second round pick from Michigan State. So potentially this could be a very good uh, passing game if they want to unleash it. Now the defense has been great. In fact, it's the only defense in this division uh, that has played strong defense. Last year they were 10th in the NFL in yards allowed. They were sec 11th against the pass, 16th against the run. They still have run stuffer star Lotalua up front as well as Cowan Short and 29-year-old defensive end Charles Johnson. Look at the sack totals for this guy the last three years. 12 and a half, 11 and eight and a half sacks. They got 24 year old linebacker. Luke Ketchley is back with, and he's a terrific force along with defensive end Tony, Coney Ely and a first round pick linebacker, Sean Thompson comes aboard. He was the 25th overall pick out of Washington. So there's a lot of talent and depth on this defense. Veteran cornerback, Chris Houston joins the team as well. And it's no surprising that Carolina, if you like to play games under the total with their running oriented attack and very strong defense, 2014 and one run under the total. Now the schedule for Carolina, they got some road games that are winnable against Jacksonville, the Bucks and the Titans. And you got the Giants and the Falcons are relatively easy too. Although they're gonna be playing at Seattle and they host Green Bay, the Colts and the Eagles and Houston. Those are difficult games and they're going to be playing five of their final eight games on the road. Now, for third place in the division, take a look at the rebuilding Atlanta Falcons. Las Vegas has them projected at eight wins, so they're expecting them to take a bit of a step up. Now, this team has won only four and six games in each of the last two years, so you've got a new coaching staff coming aboard. The defense has been terrible for a while. So they get Dan Quinn. He's the new head coach after running the Seattle Seahawks defense. And he inherits a unit that was just awful last year. Last in the NFL in yards, giving up 398.3 yards per game. 27th in points, 26.1 points per game. That's why their first two draft picks went for the defense. They take defensive end Vic Beasley, eighth overall pick out of Clemson. And cornerback Jalen Collins was taken in the second round. Atlanta simply couldn't stop the run. They ranked 21st in that. And the defensive line had only 22 sacks. They're rebuilding around defensive end Tyson Jackson. He is back. He's going to rotate with Beasley, Adrian Claiborne, and Malika Goodman to try and upgrade this young line. Collins, the team's second-round pick, he's going to try to beat out 2013 second-round pick Robert Alford for the starting job in the secondary. And pretty good cornerback group. However, the safety positions really look weak for Atlanta, so they're going to have some trouble stopping teams as they rebuild. The offense, though, is where the strength is. Fifth in the NFL in passing last year, 284.6 yards per game. They were 12th in scoring with 23.8 points per game. But they're going to look for more balance this season. That's because Kyle Shanahan is the new offensive coordinator. His team is ranked 6th, 7th, and 5th in the NFL in passing the last three years. They do return. Terrific passing game with quarterback Matt Ryan. 28 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, almost 4,500 yards passing last year, 66% completions. He's got wide receiver Julio Jones, who had over 1,500 yards catching. Aging Roddy White is still here, and they bring in rookie Justin Hardy. Tight end is still a weak spot. And rookie running back Kevin Tevin Coleman was taken in the third round. He's going to get the knot. So some new pieces in here. Now the ground game has ranked 32nd and 24th in rushing the last two years. It's going to have a different approach though, not only with the new running back, but there are major changes on the Falcons offensive line. Shanahan is going to be bringing in outside zone blocking schemes, demanding that the linemen are capable of getting out and running. That means no more big fatties on this line. They will keep left tackle Jake Matthews, but they have a newcomer in Chris Chester at left guard, Joe Hawley at center, and top free agent right guard John Asamoah is in there along with Ryan Schrader. But keep in mind, Hawley and Matthews have had some recent surgeries, something to keep in mind. Atlanta's on a 9-3 and three run under the total schedule for the Falcons. September is going to look Difficult. They're going to open with the Eagles at home and then the Giants and the Cowboys. This team could be 0-3. Got the Colts at home and it's going to be their toughest game after that. 
And then there are some winnable games against the Bucks, Redskins, Titans, 49ers, Vikings, and Jaguars. All right, and then last place, we'll look at the rebuilding Tampa Bay Bucks. Las Vegas has them projected at five and a half wins. That may seem a bit high as this team has won four and two games in each of the last two years. They haven't been covering games either 13 and 19 against the spread. I guess there's nowhere to go but up for Tampa Bay. Now, Lovey Smith, he has steered this team in that downward cycle, but he's still here. He does bring in a new offensive coordinator in Dirk Carter, who was shown the door by Atlanta. This guy is a pass-happy offensive coordinator, but they do have the rookie quarterback in Jameis Winston. This guy threw 17 touchdowns in his sophomore season at Florida State. He's going to be a rookie this year. And I got news for him. This is not the ACC, Jameis. He also should have had a lot more interceptions than that because he forced a lot of passes. I have serious doubts about this kid, particularly in his rookie season. Now, he does have some uh, very good passing attacks to go to. This team ranked 25th in passing, 29th in rushing. But there's a lot of talented targets for him to work with. Six foot five wide receiver Vincent Jackson have over a thousand yards, 14.3 yards per catch. And six foot five wide out Mike Evans also had over a thousand yards, 12 touchdowns. You throw in six foot six tight end Austin Safarian Jenkins. He had 221 yards, but this is some hugely talented and tall targets to work with. Now, the Bucs have overhauled their offensive line for 2015. They're going to be going with a two-back running back system, sticking with Doug Martin and Charles Sims. But these guys have not been productive the last couple of years. It was only three years ago that Martin had 1400, over 1,400 yards rushing, but that was a while ago. And there's a lot of rebuilding going on, particularly with two rookies projected to start on Tampa Bay's offensive line in Donovan Smith and Ali Marpet. Overall, this looks like a below-average running game. It's going to put a lot of pressure on this rookie quarterback. The defense really hasn't been much better. They were 28th against the pass, 19th against the run last year. Not a great pass-rushing team, 36 total sacks. Do have a couple of team pieces to build around. In Jacques Smith, he had six and a half sacks. And defensive tackle Gerald McCoy is decent on the line up front, eight and a half sacks he had last year. The safety position in the secondary looks very weak. Chris Conti, he was a problem with the terrible Chicago Bears defense, so he's not much of an upgrade. Now, the schedule for Tampa Bay, Winston and Marcus Mariota, they're going to be meeting in the opener as they host Tennessee. But after that, it's going to be three consecutive losses before hosting Jacksonville. Road games for Tampa Bay are going to be at the Eagles, Colts, Rams, and Panthers. All of those games are probably going to be losses. And you got a couple of tough home games, too, against Dallas and the Giants. Probably not going to be a winning season. I would not be looking at over five and a half wins with all the weak spots and the problems that they have. And also, if you like to play totals, keep in mind Tampa Bay is on a nine and one run under the total. Now, if you're looking for winning plays each day, go to jimfice.com as well as articles on college football and NFL. Plus, new members to the website can sign up for free picks and you get a $50 credit just for signing up. All that and more at jimfice.com.